Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my beginner piano course level one. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Now, let me show you two exercises that we can learn without reading music. The first one is going to be called a five finger exercise. Now, in order to play a five finger exercise, we need to know which finger is which. If you look at your two hands, the right hand, the left hand, the thumb is always going to be called number one. The second finger is called number two, the middle finger is called number three, the ring finger is called number four, and the little finger is number five. So you always go outwards from the thumb. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, this is something really important because we are going to refer to finger numbers constantly in every single lesson. Now, what I would like you to do is get your thumb number one and put it on the middle C. So again, next to the two blacks, you will find middle C. And then put one finger on each note. So you've got five fingers on the first five white notes. Now try to get your hand into a very relaxed shape, curved fingers. Do not keep your fingers flat on the keys. Now what we're going to do is play the five notes after each other like this. One, two, three, four, five, and then come back, four, three, two, one. So all I did was I went up five notes and came back without stopping. Now what can happen when you play this exercise is that you skip a finger and you do things like that. So make sure that one finger on each note, number one on the C, two on the D, three on the E, four on the F, and five on the G. And try to separate those fingers and let them move individually. These outer two fingers are going to be the hardest to move independently because they are the least useful in our everyday life. But in piano music, they are going to be just as useful as the other fingers. So once again, curving the fingers, starting very evenly. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And that's the exercise. You go up five notes and come back. Now, if you practice this a lot and you feel like, okay, now I know it, then what you can do is shift up your hand just one note to the right. So from C, your thumb is gonna go to the next note to D and each finger goes up one note and then you repeat it. And then you shift up again one note to the right and your thumb is going to be on the E now and every finger one note higher. And you can do this shift a few more times. until you reach the next C, and that means we did one octave of this exercise. So repeating it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And this is called one sequence of the five finger exercise. Now, a couple of things that can go wrong is if the rhythm becomes very uneven. So one note is going to be much shorter than the other one. All of them have to be the same length. So one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. It's really important to keep it even. The second thing that can happen is that your strong fingers play the notes much louder than your weak fingers like this. and certain notes stick out because they are much louder than the rest. In that case, again, you need to really be careful and make sure every note is the same loudness and the same speed. Now, as you could see when I was doing this exercise, I wasn't keeping my hand static like this, but I was following the sound with a little bit of rotation and movement, almost like tucking under as I was going up. So. 
lift and back and lift. So as I move up with the notes, my arm and my hand kind of follows the sound and then comes back. So tucking under and coming back, tucking under and coming back. And again, this is going to give you a much more fluent result and a much more musical sound and keeping your hand very static, which can lead to tension in your hand and other problems later on. Now let's see the left hand. The left hand is going to start from the lower C. So here is middle C and here is our low C, eight notes down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to start on the little finger this time, not on the thumb, so number five, one finger on each note, curved fingers and repeat the same exercise. Five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, and lift. And again, this was the five finger exercise on the left hand, but starting on number five little finger, finishing on one on the G. Then you shift up your hand again, just like we did before. And you carry on until you get to the middle C again, eight repetitions. Now, when you manage to do both of these, you have many options with this exercise and you can use this exercise for many months to come. Even when you start playing scales and arpeggios, this is a very useful exercise because after a few weeks, you don't have to think about it. It's just going to become a routine and it makes your fingers work without reading any music. So if you know it quite well, you can start going a little bit faster but don't ever go faster than your hands allow you. If you start getting mistakes or unevenness, then slow down. Quality is always more important than quantity. The ultimate challenge in the beginning stages is to try it hands together. So the right hand is going to start number one on the middle C, and the left hand is going to start number five little finger on the low C. And the problem here is that the two hands will not want to coordinate very well. So you have to really concentrate on getting both notes down exactly at the same time, like this. If you ever hear anything like this, where one hand goes slightly before the other or after, then you have to stop and again, try again, concentrate and both notes at the same time. And if you manage to do this one little bit, hands together, you can again try to shift up your hand, shift up until you get to the high C. So eight repetitions each time, one note higher to the right. And this one was the five finger exercise, my favorite exercise for beginners. The second exercise I'm going to show you is working on a different kind of technical problem, which is called skips or skipping. And it's going to be the skippy exercise. Now we're going to start with the right hand in the same shape. So curved fingers, number one on the C and one finger on each note. But this time we're going to skip a note. So we play the first one, then we skip the second one. We play with number three, the third one, E. Then we skip this one again and we play the little finger. Back to number three and one. And that's it. So one, three, five, three, one. And this one helps you to develop independence of these fingers because you have to play that without this finger touching the note. Okay, so once again, one, three, five, three, one. Skipping one note between each and make sure you skip the finger as well so it doesn't become two here and three there. One, three, middle finger and five. When you practice this again evenly in sound and speed, you can shift up your hand to the right and repeat. Shift. 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 And it's complete. Once you reach the high C, 
You've done eight repetitions and it's complete. Let's see the left hand. Again, starting little finger on the low C, middle C, low C, five, skipping a note, three, one, back to three middle finger, and five. Then shifting up the hand, shifting up the hand, until you reach the middle C with your little finger. Again, you have multiple options here. You can try hands separately many times until you can go a little bit faster, but evenly. And then ultimately you should try it again, hands together, right hand starting on the middle C, left hand number five on the low C, one octave apart, eight notes apart. Shift up. Shift up. Shift up. Shift up. Shift up. Shift up. And shift. And this was the skippy exercise. So these two warm-ups are going to help you to get your fingers moving very quickly without reading any music. Make sure to practice them every single day when you sit down at the piano, focusing on the hand shape, on relaxing the hand, curving the fingers, keeping the speed very even and the sound and trying to challenge yourself every day to go a little bit faster and eventually try it hands together. If you enjoy this lesson, make sure to check out the premium version of this course, which is going to include a free method book, lots of filmed video tutorials for sight reading exercises, technical exercises, performance pieces, and best of all, you're going to get personal feedback from me to make sure your progress is as smooth and efficient as it can get.